Matt, I've been reading your new book, 10,000 Reasons, Stories of Faith, Hope and Thankfulness, inspired by the worship anthem. Now that anthem, 10,000 Reasons, has become the soundtrack of so many people's lives. But, but when, how and where did it come into your life? Well, I wrote that song in this very chapel we're sitting in. It's a hundred year old chapel, a little village in England. And I was here with my friend Jonas Myron. And we'd had a day of songwriting. I was ready to go home. In fact, I think I was begging to go home. And it was 1.30 a.m. And he said, but I've got just one, one more thing. I've just got this little beginning of a song. Through this song, we've become aware of these amazing stories of faith and hope. The people are just putting their trust in God, singing a song to him in the most crazy, intense moments of their life. And the song's gone all over the world. In fact, in a prison in Bali, it became associated with an entirely different event. Yes, I was reading the newspaper one day and just came across this story of these prisoners who had faced a death sentence for drug trafficking offences nine years before. And it, and it went through the story and, it, and then it said at the moment of death they were singing this song, 10,000 Reasons, Bless the Lord. And I thought, man, that's astonishing. Anyway, a few weeks went past and I heard from one of the pastors who'd been present at that time. And she just told us of how, man, these guys, they were inspiring worshippers. They'd become Christians since becoming um, convicted and their lives had radically been transformed. They were radically transforming the lives of others there in that prison, but they still had to face the death sentence. And as they did so, they did it with dignity, but they also did it with worship on their lips and in their hearts. And Andrew and Mayu were their names. And you can read the story in the book. It's so inspiring. And I came out of it thinking, if you can face a firing squad and still be found with a song of faith and hope and worship on your lips and in your heart, then I think you can pretty much face anything in this life and still be found singing to Jesus. I have to say one of the things I like about the book is the fact that it's not just one amazing story after another, but you intersperse and you weave in elements of your own story. You know, I grew up reading the Psalms all the time, things like Psalm 121, I lift my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And so as well as singing and reading these scriptural songs, I started to realize actually by writing songs, it's a great way of drawing near to God. It's a way, great way of standing on truth. And it's a great way of processing what I'm walking through. And, and so it became part of my life. And after a while, I realized not only is this helping me, these songs can actually help other people. And I realized that it's really the songs where I'm putting my own story in, and they're very real and authentic and raw. They seem to be the ones that are connecting the most with other people. That really has happened with 10,000 Reasons. And, and some of the stories in the book reflect that so vividly. Can you tell us a little bit about Charlie Burton's story? The night before I'd been in Los Angeles on a stage collecting a couple of Grammy Awards for this 10,000 Reasons song, and that was a huge surprise. Next morning, waking up, one of the first emails I read is from the niece of Charlie Burton, and she's just telling us about this really powerful moment, a meaningful moment, a profound moment they had in the hospital room. He was passing away, he had struggled with terminal cancer, he's age 46, and uh, as he went to be with Jesus, he, he wanted this song played over him, this 10,000 Reasons song. And it, and it was just an amazing moment for me to think, okay, last night on that stage, collecting those awards, that's really meaningful, of course, yeah, special. But this here is what it's all about. This is why I write songs right now. Uh, and it was amazing to see that song become the soundtrack of his life and his family's life. I love the idea that within this book and within this song, there's a sense of hope. And it's been amazing to hear these stories come back. These, these people from all around the globe, I mean, stories from townships in South Africa or you know, some back street somewhere in Mumbai or, or like a shed, you know, on a glitzy stage in LA. What I love about all these stories is there's a common thread of hope running through them all. And, and I found them so inspiring. You know, for me, when these stories came back, it made me want to be a better worshiper. This book's not about showcasing the song. It's really about how the song has showcased these hearts of worship.